We got a lot to talk about tonight, man, because the Knicks and the Heat would clash in a battle of playoff implications. The rivalry renewed the last game of the season series. And with the return of the floor general, you were hoping that the Knicks would come out the gates hot, but that was not the case. It was slow going. Brunson struggled. Randall struggled. RJ struggled. And unfortunately, the Knicks would lose Julius Randall. By the end of the first half with a sprained ankle, you hope he recovers. So who would deliver for the Knicks? It was a six man of the year, Emmanuel Quickly, with 24 points off the bench, eight of 14 from the field, leading the way for the squad. And how about Quinton Grimes? 23 points for Grimes, eight of 24 from the field. Knicks also getting significant contributions from Josh Hart, Isaiah Hartenstein, and leading the Knicks to a 101 to 92 victory over the Heat. Season series goes to the Knicks. When you get a win over the Heat, I'm, I'm gonna explain my, my previous comments a little later, mm. but when you get a win over the Heat, when you put them in the rear view mirror, four games up, when you're able to do it without your th your big three having good games and losing Julius Randle to injury, I'm putting this up there as the best win of the season. They've been several. Talk about the Boston game. There's been several. The Denver game. This was it right here. You look at the stats. Brunson 12. Barrett 12. Julius 3. This is a game they should have lost. But let's break this thing down brick by brick, man. Because on the last show, we talked about Emmanuel Quickly's brilliance in terms of his development in year three. Credit to Tom Thibodeau. Mm. In terms of him leading the race for the NBA Six Man of the Ward. And if there was any question about who should win, Emmanuel Quickly should have sealed it tonight because Emmanuel quickly as soon as he got in the game whether it was a second quarter or the late third things changed they needed it badly because the floor general Brunson came back from the Bruce hand he didn't have it whether it was conditioning not getting you know getting used to the cast mm -hmm. a little bit leery to be aggressive he, he, he wasn't on his A game he didn't have it so for quickly to come in and just take over and be the floor general. You saw Brunson deferring to quickly. He was fantastic, man. And you said it. I don't want to hear any more conversations about, you know, how many games should he start uh, to be the sixth man of the year. I don't want to hear none of that, okay? He did. He's done everything you needed to have done to seal up that award at this point. Because, because you talk about he's averaging 14 points. You talk about his defense being a two-way player. He's improved as a rebounder. He's improved as a playmaker. You saw tonight, he he got activated, man. How about Quentin Grimes? Mm. Grimes Hive. If Grimes Hive, as the leader of the Grimes Hive, tonight was interesting because with Brunson coming back, I was very curious to see what type of game Grimes would have. He was hot the last three games. He was hot when Brunson was, was not in. He, he, they did play well together in Miami. He did play well. They didn't go mm -hmm. to him in the fourth quarter, but he did play well. But I was still curious to see, would they go to him and would he stay aggressive? And they did. Both things happened. 23 points for Quentin Grimes, eight rebounds, four dimes, one steal. This was definitely one of his best games, I think, of his career. Eight of 14 from the field, five of 10 from downtown. Uh, you know, Grimes is just impressive, man. Number one, knocking down the shots. That's his go-to. You got to knock down those threes. We need him to shoot the three mm -hmm. ball well. He's done that. Five of ten from downtown tonight. Putting the ball on the floor, attacking the closeouts, a very aggressive heat defense. He found his bigs for a couple of easy slams, whether it was Mitch or Hartenstein, and then playing solid defense, man. This was a great, great game from Quentin Grimes, and I can only just hope that he can keep this up, man, because they're going to need him as they head into the postseason. Big night. You can't talk about this win tonight, in my opinion, without talking about the contributions from Isaiah Hartenstein. 
What did I tell you about Dude. Hardstein, man? Here what we did go. I tell you about Hardstein? Here we go. This Didn't man I tell you that this guy was going to deliver as a backup big? I, I told you about this guy, man. Hartenstein played really well tonight. Uh, nine rebounds. You talk about two assists, two steals, one block. Got you six points. Um, I really wish that he got that easy layup in the fourth quarter, like that. That that one that that one hurt. But uh, he's been good, man. He's been good to close out the stretch. And when you see Mitch struggling once again, it comes back to when you have two centers that can pick up for one another when one's not playing well. That's good. But the passing, dude, the passing is what really separates him yeah. from what Mitch can do. Like Mitch, total rim protector, has been the guy like you're you're the foundation for what the Knicks defense is, being that rim protector, right? Being that ultimate protector, the safety valve. But Hartenstein, his passing man, like finding yeah. heart on those things, whether it's or finding anybody, even when he missed even when he missed Quentin Grimes on the perimeter for a three, it's like the fact that he's he can think that fast and know where his teammates are. That changes everything. That caused- There was a caller who called in last week or last last uh, game, Monday, yep. that was talking about uh, Hart. He's in a bit of a slump. And my reply was, well, scoring is not, that's not what he's here for, right? His scoring is a plus. What you want him to do with the little things, you want him to do the dirty work. Get out in the boards, get us out in transition play tough defense, play to mind games with some of the star players. That's what you want to do, the intangibles. Some of the things Mm -hmm. that don't appear on the box score. But tonight, he was back to being that guy. Uh, Because I thought he was was a a core component to getting us this win tonight. 13 points for Hart, 8 boards, 3 dimes, 2 steals, 6 or 7 from the field. We got to go through Josh Hart's stats because he's been here for 20 games. Let's do it. Through 20 games, he's averaging 11 points. He's shooting 62.2% from the field. He is shooting 56.8% from downtown. Now, it's on low volume. It's 2.2 three-point attempts, but 56.8%. I'll take it. 80% at the free throw line, averaging 6.7 rebounds, 3.7 assists, 1.5 steals. This dude's a monster. Absolute monster. 11 points. It's not, like you said, it's not going to be, this. it's not the scoring. The box score looks nice, especially with the efficiency from the field, right? But it's everything else. It's the steal. It's the steals. Good floor game. High IQ passing. Just getting the hockey pass. All that stuff that you want from this guy who is truly, truly, truly embodied what a Tom Thibodeau player is. And every time he steps on the court, I can only just look for positive things to say about him. We are. It's just, <laughs> does it really have to be this way? <laughs> Is, isn't that what we're looking for here? How about yes, but, a little adjustment? Does it really have to be this way, though? Come on now. That's all my question is. Like, why does it have to be due to injury? But, yo, I hope Julius Randle's okay, man. He's a big part of what the Knicks do. Um, but it's good to see that this team rallied without Julius Randle. Uh, my question is, moving forward... What does this mean for, like, what what is Julius Randle's injury? How long is he out for? Because playoffs are right around the corner. You're talking about five games left in the regular season. you got the Cleveland Cavaliers on Friday. Will he even be ready to go? He looked like he was in a lot of pain. pain. It was, he was bad grimacing. Injury. It was a bad injury. He, he, yeah, so I'm not, like, the way he was walking off, the way he was just, he, he had to just try to walk it off on the court just to take his free throws, just so he could stay active to stay in the game. I'm not 100% certain that we're going to see him for this Cavs game. Um, may not even see him for the Wizards game, but, you know, if this team can hold off, can continue to win and close out the season strong without him, I say get him some rest, man, because he's played a lot of games. You're going to need him more so in the playoffs, but hopefully he's okay, man. He's not out for too long. We all seen the game, so, you know, I'm going to just give the game ball to my guy quickly. He stepped up again. I was actually shocked that Tibbs made an adjustment and, you know, let Brunson rest out for the rest of the fourth and let quickly do his thing. Um, But just from moving forward now, you know, unfortunately, Julius is injured. I think Tibbs is actually going to have to reach in his bag now, and now he's going to actually have to come up with some schemes. I think that we might see a Mitch iHeart lineup, especially going against the Cleveland Cavaliers because they got a big lineup. So I think 
that'd be the best way to go and actually give the bench plays like Sims and um Obi more minutes because now that Julius is down, you got to kind of use more guys. You can't stick to a nine man. You know, you kind of got to reach deeper into that bag. And I think the players is ready. Our youth is stepping up. We just beat a tough Miami team. And it was the young guys quickly and Grimes. They stepped up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was I was surprised, man. Surprised they were able to, to, to pull this out and pull away in, in impressive fashion. But give credit to these guys because they felt that sense of urgency. I thought quickly has has ha, has had it since Brunson went down. He's just just playing very focused. He understands the magnitude of the moment and his role and how critical it is to get this team off on the right track when he's in the game and deliver a victory. Josh Hart always wears that on his sleeve. So just seeing the two of them operating out there, Hart and Stein, you know, playing well, Grimes. It was a gutty win, man. You know, we, we broke we broke the spirit of the Miami Heat yes. in the fourth quarter. I love it. So many times the Miami Heat have done it to us over the years, trapping us, turning the ball over, taking our soul. We we did it tonight. Yep. And um it was a character win like you guys talked about, Alex and C P. Um I thought Brunson got fouled multiple times in that game. And yeah, Miami's physical, but it's Jalen Brunson. Call the foul. Mm-hmm. He got fouled a couple times in the playoffs. Call the foul. He's Jalen Brunson. He's an all-star. I don't give a damn what anybody says. Mm-hmm. I know he's an all-star. Give him the call. When he gets swiped on the arm, it's a foul call. It's a skill that he has. He has the footwork. He has the mind. Call the foul. Mm-hmm. Now, let me just say this. Quickly, Grimes and Hart, defensively, the Heat spread you out. The Cavs will spread us out if we play them. I like the defense. They at least gave me energy where they played their little games where they spread you out, shoot threes. Jimmy, I thought Grimes was very smart. And Josh Hart, to me, just with the turnovers being in the right place, they deserve to win this game. I don't know where the Knicks rank throughout the year on rebounding. I don't know where we rank. I'm curious about that. But Mm -hmm. I'm proud of this team rebounding. And if we're going to beat the Cavs, we're going to need to rebound the ball the way we've rebounded all year. I, I mean, we need to be. This is we need to pound the Cleveland Cavaliers if we play them. I know I'm getting ahead of myself. Mm-hmm. I want to win the rebound matchup. And the last thing I'll say about the playoffs is this, CP. I know if we play the Cavs, they had Donovan Mitchell, mm-hmm. and it's about who plays the best in the playoffs. Right. It's like it, it, here's the bottom line: it's who plays the best in seven games. They don't deserve to win just because they have Donovan Mitchell. We don't deserve to win just because we have Julius Randle, Jalen Brunson, and our cast, and we've had a great year. It's about who plays you the best. But I'll just it. say this. I, I feel like there's some karma. There is mm. a little bit of karma. Uh, you got to earn it. you got to play well. That doesn't mean anything. You throw it out the window. But I will say this. Yep. There's a little karma here, okay? We, we, I, I'm feeling like that we built something organically, and, like, I, I understand. I, I just – CP, mm-hmm. we – there's karma now with us where we didn't have good karma for many years with this team mm-hmm. because we did the wrong things. We've done the right things, CP. We've done the right things. Why can't we just organically have some, some hope and positivity? You know why? Because I think we can. We just yeah. got to be positive people. Tomorrow night, ladies and gentlemen, the game of the week preview, Knicks versus Cavs. Make sure you tap into that. We'll have that premiering sometime in the evening time, Eastern time. So, we will catch up with you guys tomorrow. Al, great show. JD, great job on a play-by-play. That squad is strong. The Knicks are strong. We out of here. Peace.